interpretations increased again there for Paul Jewell. Look at these fans. They are in absolute agony. Just praying for the final whistle, fighting their fingers to the bone. Welcome to new team. Paul Jules Bradford City have done it. St Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. Two islands, one paradise is the way they describe this place. And it's the location that Bradford City have chosen to begin their build-up to a first ever season in the Premiership. It's the first time a Premiership team's ever turned up to take part in the island's annual football festival, and that brought the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Tourism to the airport to welcome their special guests. I will be very brief and call on the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honourable <coughs> Sam Kondo, to welcome you on behalf of the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Peter Jenkins, President of the St. Kitts Nevis Football Association, Honorable Dwyer Stefan, Minister of Tourism, Culture and Environment, Chairman of Bradford City. The official pleasantries out the way, the real work soon started for the players. Absolutely potent, don't want it. Smile, you're on camera, man. Yeah? Smile, you're on camera. Oh, oh. okay, good. <laughs> Hi, good morning, Peace. everybody. Peace. We are in Sankets. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, it's already over 30 degrees, the Bradford lads have been hard at it for over an hour now, but this morning's training session hasn't been without its problems. I thought they were the finished market um, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, but it will be very difficult, you know, for them to market. Are we okay to play on it tonight? Yeah, yeah. No, there might be water or something. I don't no, no, know. no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It won't be any problem. It can't turn on here. It's the train over there. Pick a pitch. So what time are we going to kick off? Um, it's maybe about 6.15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, because Six, there's a... 6.15, quarter to 8. No, 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 no. <laughs> you tell me it's 7 o'clock kick-off now. Right, right, right. Yeah, this, is, this is the um, official document, you know, and it's saying uh, 7 p.m. The local guys have got the pace just about right for these sort of conditions. When you're trying to run and play football, though, the man carrying the cold water suddenly becomes very popular indeed. Love you. Make sure your hammies are well stretched. Okay, final little stretches. Be ready. The heat does make it very difficult to train, but we are here to work and, and to get fit. And. Uh, you know, the game tonight, is, I think it's 6 o'clock kickoff, and it's still going to be extremely hot. Well, it's 7 o'clock now. I think. Is it 7 o'clock? It doing seems, to favor. Change. seems to change yeah. every couple of minutes. Yeah. For the Bradford lads, match preparations meant a few hours' kip back at the hotel. For Cess Pod, once a Bradford City legend himself, now St Kitts national manager, the afternoon brought a trip right back to his roots. Well, the house was there, and then there was a water tank next to it, and then there was, I don't know, must, it seemed like a hundred stairs that came down to the ground level, and then you'd come out here to get onto the road. It, at the time, to me, it was the biggest house in the world, you know, but looking at the area now, it couldn't have been that big. It would be nice when you get the builders in. <laughs> <laughs> you were six, weren't you, when you left? Yeah, I was six. Um, when we actually moved to Leeds, all, all the whole family moved, you know, and... I, only, I think we've been back twice since that. Um, the last time I came back was for a holiday, and that's really when I got interested in, foot, in when they approached me in respect of this job that I'm doing now. My dad's grave. Your grandmother? Yeah. 
Evangeline Adams. That's my, on my mum's side. Um, that was the first time I came back to visit St Kitts, actually, 1981. Um, outside the football, because I came back, to, actually came back to do some coaching with a team called Superstars, mm -hmm. and I was playing for Bradford at the time, and that's when I got interested in what was going on here. And then I came back from a grandmother's funeral in 1981, and that's when I really got an interest in St Kitts as an island as well as the football. Sess has been lured home with the task of leading these tiny islands to the World Cup finals, and whether in St Kitts or England. The pressures on a national manager remain the same. There are critics here as well, aren't there? Yeah, well, the, these guys are just straightforward, and I can deal with that. I mean, I say, he said to me, are you Cesc Pod? I said, yes, and he just, just to make sure that I wasn't lying to him, he said, the national coach? I said, yes. He goes, you, they say you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> you know? uh, and th that'll happen, because what happens here is people look after their own villages. And recently, I've left a, a member of this area out of the squad so they talk about it and he gives them his perspective and and then they get on with it i get on with my job it won't change the way i do things the reunion with his former club means it's a big night in store for cess a fixture against an english premiership side means it's a big night for the island Bam, 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 bam. In, out, in, out. Today's a big day. Those of you who got your chance, hold it. Don't let it go. And make sure you take advantage of your chance today. Play as a team, fellas. Play as a team. Because as a team, that's how you're going to do it. Let's try and just take it into the game. We've got a football to enjoy. Pass it and move, pass it and move. We ask you to just help us in every one-on-one -on -one battle today on the field of play. Most of all, help us to play today as a team, dear Father. Lord Father God, help us to do the right things. Help us to create opportunities, dear Father. And help us to count them most of all. Lord Father God, we ask you to just be with us. Help us to come out this game victorious tonight, dear Father. So this is where the build-up to the Premiership season for Bradford City begins in earnest with their first friendly fixture against St Kitts and Nevis. The man upstairs couldn't do too much to help the home side though. Ashley Westwood's first half header setting Bradford on their way to a 4-1 win. It's a good game, it's tough. Your boys enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just the fact that they're playing against an English side. Yeah. Let alone oh, it's a big G up and a lift forward. Oh, yeah. 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 Canadians will be fit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that game myself. Yeah. Never mind the lads. Oh, anyway, well done and thanks for the game. No and, problem. Um, what are you doing now? I'm just going to go back and see that the, the boys put the gear away because I have to wash the kit now. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Reality <laughs> change. Times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> you to do the kit. Shut up. <laughs> and where, where from here in terms of preparations and business as usual back in the, the morning? Hotel. Back to the hotel. Um, yeah, we'll be, I mean, looking at the boys, they're going to be really tired, so. Um, but I just have a warm, warm down in the morning, make them uh, do some swimming and, and uh, just relax some more. Can you let's get down to shallow end? Speedos. Shallow end. Hey, listen, Rachel, honestly, we've been running this morning. This is just a little bit of a relaxing time, you know? I don't know what you're saying. a bit different this isn't it? It certainly is, it's hard, it looks hard anyway. I'm glad I'm not having to do it. <laughs> Only training I like is uh, a few pints. <laughs> a morning to enjoy some fun in the sun then, but in truth, out of the water and one game into the tour, the Bradford lads were beginning to feel the heat. Very difficult really, you know, the weather. You know, we've been getting up at um, seven in the morning and training at half eight. Like we finished training and it was like half ten and we finished. 
you know, but the heat at half eight, nine o'clock is unbelievable. You, you can't breathe, you know, you're running around and you try to get a breath and you can't, you can't find it. It's very, very difficult at the moment. Are you good in the sun anyway or not? No, I've got to wear a net all the time. Well, I've got a ball that is it is. But like, no, I don't like it. And the problem of having to work hard in hot, hot weather is to show itself clearly in Bradford's next match in the festival. Sugar used to be the mainstay of the economy on St Kitts, but now the bottom's fallen out of that market, so it's tourism that can help sustain life on this tiny island. Mind you, the memory lingers on. Jamaica has the reggae boys. St Kitts and Nevis have the sugar boys. Bradford are here to work towards a football season. The islanders are working towards a more secure financial future through football. Football is a very important sport. Sport is very important to us. It is part of the development of our people. It is also a very good instrument to bring our people into contact with other people. It is also a very good aspect of tourism development, and sports tourism is important to us. So this football festival brings an excellent group of footballers from the United Kingdom to play against our players. It brings visitors to the island. It enhances everybody in the process, socially, individually, of course, economically. This is the place to head for if you want to buy the kit, supplied by a Leeds-based company to a shop owned well, by a Leeds what do you lad. Think to the, uh, the style and the fabric of this. Oh, uh, it's great. The colours are marvellous. We designed a home shirt and a away shirt, and uh, the Football Association themselves, obviously, were just thinking from the football angle. And as all clubs, they uh, decided to purchase initially more home shirts than away shirts, and they soon realised that they forgot about the political side of the island where you have the two parties, one is particularly a green party and the other one is particularly the red party. And of course, the people would only buy the colour that supported their political party as well as the football team. So we quickly made uh, a lot more of the green shirts and uh, flew them out to St. Kitts. I think the relationship between the visiting fans and the locals have been absolutely terrific. I think uh, we've learnt a lot from them as to how to support our fans and as far as the future of tourism, this is sports tourism is big business. Uh, or could be big business, and I frankly think we haven't got the infrastructure to realise the potential at the moment. I think that the hotel rooms that are being built at the moment could be filled if it's marketed correctly on a, a football festival that I'd like to see last for two or three weeks rather than just one week. We could bring an English team out the first week, they could return on the Friday and another team arrive on that same Friday. We could extend this for three weeks and I believe truly we could fill every hotel room on the island. Satellite television and marketing are having their effect. Slowly but surely, soccer is becoming king in this once cricket mad island. Who do you want to play for? Manchester United. And who? St. Kitts. You want to play for St. Kitts? Yeah. I want to play for Bradford yeah, I want to play for St. Kitts too. You want to play for St. Kitts? Yeah. First, yeah. I want to play for, Brad, for St. Kitts, but I have to get an education first and play and go and play for Manchester United. Bradford City. The rhythm of life on this island can be intoxicating, but footballing fame and fortune lies elsewhere. Keith Gums is St Kitt's star player. He plays professionally at the moment in Greece after failing to get a work permit to sign for Oldham. Still, though, England is where he wants to be. It doesn't matter to me, you know, which team. You know, honestly speaking, I, I just want to get out and playing in the Premiership is a, you know, a dream for everyone. And now the Premiership seems to be the place to be. And, no doubt I would like to be enough. And Bradford City might yet make Keith Gum's dream come true. <laughs> the national anthem failed to inspire the English in their second and final festival game, though. A tired looking city side outplayed in a 3-0 defeat by Canada's Olympic team. 
We didn't think they would do this well. They came in yesterday. Uh, I've only been together for one day, and they came out and they played very well for them, and they're they're very happy with that result. I think it was a great result. We played on Tuesday, Sunday, had a very hard day Sunday morning. Um, trained yesterday, trained this morning, so a lot of them awful tired bodies out there. One or two knocks and bruises, and people who couldn't uh, risk. So, yeah, we didn't play well, but you know, people like David Weatherall's got 90 minutes under his belt. Uh, Robbie Blake. Um, so, you know, it's. It's, people look at the score and think he lost 3-0 to yeah, an Olympic side. It's, it's, not the, it's not the result, it's the, it's the fitness. With the festival games out of the way and the rough waters of the Premiership now rapidly approaching, a chance next for the players to rest minds and bodies on a boat trip to paradise. <laughs> What's the worries? Fish? Yeah. You don't, don't like them? Nah, I don't know what they are out there, you know what I mean? Sea serpents and all that, look. Sea serpents? <laughs> them little snakes. It's the Caribbean, mate. <laughs> Go on, Jaws! <George. laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm uh, psyching myself up, I might go and see everybody's in because there's a few fat lads in there who the sharks might feast on first, you know what I mean? Me being not as large a portion as they are, so uh, yeah, I might get myself in actually. Come on, mate. Hey. Come on. Come on, mate. Seriously, I'm trying to you know you are. Come on. You're going to need your bond. You know you got it. Bit of a water baby yourself, though, you don't mind it. No, well, no, I don't mind. If it gets any further out and a bit deeper, I'm not, not too keen, but I can see the bottom here, can't I? So I'm alright. Do you feel, feel that this exercise has been worthwhile for? I think only time will tell. But we've worked extremely hard. You know, we went to the army camp last year, worked hard there. Different location, but same. Uh, same idea to work very hard, very hard, <clears throat> train hard, and uh, the games are uh, just an extension of training, really. And, and time will only tell. How important to have all the guys together away from all distractions for yeah. seven set or so days? Yeah, it's important to, for them. I mean, unfortunately, we have to leave four or five behind with injuries and stuff. Um, but we've got 20 players here, a couple of young players in, in, in that 20. Um, and it's a good experience, good bonding. You know, we're not here for a jolly up, although the setting's fantastic. It's, it hasn't been a holiday. Not for the players anyway, but for the supporters who'd paid out big bucks to be with the team on the tour, that's exactly what it was. It beats going to Scarborough, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, I just can't believe it. You know, we're out here watching, uh, well, one good win, one bad loss. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just ideal. And they're still very much in the party mood after last season's amazing promotion. You give me the strength to carry on. Oh. I'm a bit drunk and I've forgotten the next word. Oh. Would you go Something to the very ends of the earth to watch Bradford City? I think we've nearly got there. <laughs> you can't get uh, much further than 4,000 miles. And was it worthwhile? Was it a worthwhile trip? It's always worthwhile watching the city. If the football's not very good, the entertainment always is. Because, uh, cause Phil, you guys go everywhere, don't you? Yes, we went to every game last season, and that, and like last first game last season, pre-season was Hartlepool away. So this is St Kitts is a lot high, uh, hotter than uh, Hartlepool, and the first game we did win, we didn't beat Hartlepool, so it's not a bad trip already. And their missionary zeal has helped win a few converts to the Bradford cause. My name's Rick. Rick. Yeah. Well, Rick, um, we've seen you involved with the Bradford City lads, but you were at the match as well yesterday right. evening. Yeah, good it's experience. My, it's my first match. Uh, we were chanting some songs with words I didn't understand, but you know, city, city, something. I don't know. It's a good time. We had a good time. And uh, so you, you're writing amongst the Bradford City supporters now, are you? Uh, apparently that's what's happening. I kind of got overwhelmed, and they're kind of taking me under their wing and teaching me all about British football. It's a good time.
I'm impressed with their camaraderie. It's pretty cool the way that the uh, the city really supports the team. I mean, they, they really support them a lot. The fans traveled all this way just to see them, so it's pretty cool. The stands were considerably quieter for the last match of the festival. The Bradford squad at least swelling the gate for St. Kitts versus Canada. Good memories to take back with you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, it's been one of the better pre-season trips I've been on. Uh, can't say I've ever been to the Caribbean for pre-season, only from the holidays, so uh, it's been hard switching from one to the other. Work, work from pleasure. Uh, but yeah, it's been good. Coming back next year, would you hope? Uh, well, I wouldn't mind. I don't know about from the holidays, but pre-season I'll do again, yeah, definitely. Despite enjoying the backing of the Bradford fans with star man Keith Gums injured, the host nation could only draw 1-1 with Canada, the North Americans then taking the trophy. Seth, you, will you look back fondly on this tournament? I will, you know, not, not, not because I think a lot of the, the younger players have, um, have become men overnight, but it was great having Bradford City here, you know, uh, and they've treated as well. The, the fans, I still have a good relationship with the fans, and it was nice, some of the things that they were saying, the comments they were making, and I think we not only have Bradford City fans here now, these guys who have come from England, we have St Kitts fans as well, so... I'm hoping we'll be able to continue the link between Bradford City and St. And St. Kitts Nevis Football Association. I'm sure we will. Cheers. All the very best. Oh, cheers. Cheers. You too, right? And good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the premiership. Thanks a lot. First of all, I need all that. I'm all beside. Well done. I've been under quite a lot of pressure, really, uh, in a nice sort of way, ever since the day we won promotion. And it's been a, a hurly-burly of the, the world's been moving quickly. Here, had a week, completely away. Communications are not ideal. It's, it's quite, quite difficult, uh, the communications. And uh, I've managed uh, to cut off, really, and, uh, and reflect on, on where we are. And I've spent a lot of time talking to, to Paul Jewell, and, and he's also managed to switch off in that respect. And I think we see the world clearer than perhaps we did a week ago. Well, for Bradford City, the football tournament is over. Here on the island, though, the party is just getting underway. I know we're never going to finish top five. But uh, if we finish um, below halfway or halfway this year, I think we've done really, really well. We are a small side, you know, small Bradford sort of thing. Watford, you know, tremendous season they had as well. And um, we'll be the favourites to go down, but I think we'd surprise a few people. Every game's a cup final to us, you know, every week, so it's going to be exciting every week. You know, it's not as though you're going, no disrespect to a crew or all like that, but you're not going to the crews and all like that, you know. You're going, to every, you're going to a big club every, every other week, and so I'm looking forward to it. It's 11 versus 11, we're all in the same league, uh, and we'll be going out there to give it our best shot and, and turn a few of the big boys over. Put something in your hand, come stand by to wave. Tonight is your night, wanna see you wave from high. We, we need everyone together, we need a great series for it, we need every, everyone to work as hard as they possibly can. And, you know, I think we'll surprise one or two people. The first stage is to survive, and then the second stage is hopefully to consolidate. Uh, and I'm not looking really beyond the consolidation stage at this moment in time. We've been waiting 77 years. We've been practising for the last 10, so we are <laughs> going to enjoy ourselves. And that's it, Paul Jules, Sky Sports.